This is Grillo. The way he left the Stern show was very magnanimous because he didn't want to burn any bridges. Well, that's the thing. Howard is the one who burned the bridge with me. See, oh, but Howard burned the bridge with Stuttering John. Yeah. So now Howard's banging on his door. Can I please get on the Stuttering John podcast? And he, he's going, well, you know, the way that we left things back at the Howard Stern show, I, I don't think so. And let's not forget the reason why John was upset with Howard Stern. I talk about you and I, like, well, you know, when Howard gave us the uh, Christmas gift. Oh, yeah. See, oh, fuck off with the fucking popcorn <laughs> story. He does the popcorn story again on this show. Unbelievable. It's, it's insane. And this is, I just wrote, oh, that's rich. This is him calling out Jackie. For telling an old joke. <laughs> it's so funny because, kids, I was on uh, the Opie podcast with Jackie, uh-huh. and Jackie used that joke. And I go, Jackie, the joke is so fucking old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just don't want him using your joke. <laughs> yeah. That's why. But anyway, he's calling Jackie out for using an old joke. He calls Artie out for laughing at all of his own jokes. He does all that. He does all of that <laughs> all the time. It's all he does now. So 33 minutes, John's holding court. Because John's the big celebrity out of this this crew. He was on the Tonight Show. He's the big announcer and all that. Finally, they let Elephant Boy get a word in. I was with yeah. I was with a Dominix. Uh, with, with my with, with my thank God friends. Uh, uh, Mary. I said yeah. Yeah, that's it. And, you know, and she, she thought it would be funny. Never once I read us the imp- implication of it. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> they let him go out of that. I couldn't make out anything that was happening there. I'm like, all right, well, it was fun to have him on there. Rest in peace, buddy. <laughs> Elephant Boy's the best. Christian Blatt sent me. They got a cameo from Elephant Boy for like his birthday or something. Yeah. Or no, it was his 500th episode of the Blatcast. So he sent me the whole clip. It's four minutes long. I can't understand a word of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, why is he talking for so long? Yeah. You can't make out any of it. I did that f- uh, for you. You did? I, yeah, yeah. And it was the same thing. It's just like, this is. Oh, you got Elephant Boy for me? Yeah. Oh, good, and I, I didn't you bother you. It was just like. I, unintelligible and boring. It wasn't worth <laughs> yeah, even sending. You still could have expensed it, Andy. Yeah. Don't forget. To, how much is Elephant Boy's cameo? Oh, like Ten bucks. Okay. Yeah. Well, you got ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, so then it goes back to John telling stories again. Okay, that's enough of you, Elephant Boy. Let's move on to me again. And so John wants to talk about his glory days, of course. And so he makes up the fact that Ganji was there with him. Just so we can tell the story. Did you come with me to shoot the uh, the Virgin Mary thing? No, uh, the one in Jersey. That was great. No, no. Um, who went with you? I feel so, like it was Pete Mastriani. Was our old camera guy? Oh, because that was like Maybe everybody was. says it's one of their favorite stuttering. I, I, oh yeah, I, I don't. I don't know that story. Oh no! Don't say that. I don't know that story. No, <laughs> no never say I don't know that story to stuttering John. He can't wait to tell you that story. That's why he brought it up out of nowhere. Right. Had nothing to do did with Did you anything. come with me for that great thing I did? Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't there. Oh, well, then let me tell you how great it was. In fact, he probably does that just so like, you can't call him out of this bullshit. Did you see my band open for right. Black Sabbath? Yeah. No, I did Oh, we were the best band. We blew them off the stage that night. People were booing Black Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> After they saw the stuttering John experience. Oh, fuck that nonsense was called. Mm-hmm. What else was going on in the episode you checked out, Andy? What am I missing over here? <laughs> well, uh, the only time John's not talking is when Grillo is, uh, like, sucking his dick. I, I, anybody that talks about you is like, I always say John's one of the smartest people I've ever met. And they're like, really? Stuttering John? I'm like, no. Smart on different levels. Smart like you can play music. And I'm not sucking your dick on this whole thing right no, here. No, but, but, no, but I mean, it's, just, it's just a matter of what I notice as a human being. You wrote... All your music and saying all your music on Not your true. album, which I still listen to. Not true. You got on the Howard Stern show and I played a guitar on it too, by the way. Oh, yeah, I, I, God. I, you did everything yeah. on your album. <laughs> everything. And then you you got forgot humble. The Tonight Show, one of the biggest shows in the history of America. Oh, I just have to point this out real quick because John did a beer on the balcony with the guy who wrote "I'll Talk My Way Out of It." Right. He had yeah. he had people writing the songs for him. Yeah, and he didn't play all the guitar parts. 
I mean, I, I know he had session musicians in there, but he's talked about having Billy West and Fred Norris play guitar on his album. So it's the fact that like he's going to let Grillo say, oh, yeah, you did everything. And he's going like, to <laughs> yeah. let that fucking slide. He definitely did not. Anyway. I wouldn't take credit for playing guitar on that album either way. Right. I didn't fucking touch the guitar on that yeah. one. Did you write the songs? No. Yeah. <laughs> it was all John. All John. The Tonight Show, one of the biggest shows in the history of American television. Well, yeah, with Johnny yeah. Carson was And hosting. you also <laughs> had a small fortune from the stock market. Yes. And I, I was able to yeah. buy the 10 houses I bought. Yeah. So that's when I say you, you doubt his intelligence. Just look what he's accomplished. <laughs> Look how much he's pissed away. Yeah, I know. Did he say ten houses? Yeah, yeah. he bought ten houses. Yeah. Now he has zero. Yeah, and now, and now he can't sell a shitty apartment. Yeah, now he can't sell. Now his shitty apartment. He has marked down fifty thousand dollars from what he wanted to get for it, <laughs> and it's still not selling. Well, hopefully it will. We, we're rooting for you, John. Yeah. And clip ten. He he, uh, he goes on to say, Grillo goes on to say that John is like Tom Sawyer, the way he gets all, all the interns to do his work for okay. him. Okay, I could go along with that, yeah. yeah. Or Tom Sawyer. Look at how fun it is to bake this potato. I'm having so much fun <laughs> baking this potato. Oh, no, you guys can't bake the potato. I'm All right, I'll let you try. Okay. <laughs> you got I me mean, to whitewash your fence. How, you convince people to do things for you that you're supposed to do. And then made them think that they were had to do it for you. <laughs> like it, it was pretty uh, amazing thing to watch. Yes, yes, yes. I was very good at uh, delegating. <laughs> Are you <laughs> listening, you Benny the Loco? And go, John. I think manipulating is a word. I was going to say, if you're getting manipulated by Senator John, it's not that he's smart. It's that you're that dumb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shame on you. Grillo, I love you. I hope you're on the show someday soon. But holy shit, dude, I would not admit this in public. Uh, yeah, I fell for it every time. Yeah, it just is <laughs> <laughs> so masterful with his wit. All right. So I want to come back to um, talking about the Whack Pack and talking about their favorite Whack Packers. Of course, you got Fred the Elephant Boy, who I believe is the longest running Whack Packer of all time. And I think that just has to do with not dying. Right. <laughs> I, think yeah. it's, I think it's how that works out. But whatever. We'll give it to him. And so, talking about Jeff the Drunk. Now, Jeff the Drunk was an interesting character for a minute or two, and then he got real boring, and right. it got real hard to make him interesting. But why was Jeff the Drunk ever a part of the show? It's all because of John. This is the weirdest thing to get, because you know, I was doing the phones, and yeah. I was writing jokes on the computer, but um, uh, Jeff the Drunk, like, for eight months, every day he would call, I put him on hold, yeah. And I'd write in the computer, Howard, you really would you really should pick up on this guy. I'd go in and go, Howard, you really should pick up eight months, Howard would not pick up on him. He finally picks up on him. <laughs> and look, he becomes the biggest whack pack yeah. star. Yeah, he's but, the, he's the but it's star. just amazing how long it took me to get that fucking guy on the show. <laughs> I would give the credit to Jeff the Drunk for his perseverance. Right? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not John going, I told Howard to pick up on him. So uh, in other words, Howard doesn't trust your judgment at all. Yeah. <laughs> if every day for eight months you're like, Hey, I think this guy'd be interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll be the judge of that, Chad. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with you. And, and then, then once finally, you get him on the phone, Howard and Fred are making him funny. Correct. Not Jeff the Jeff. Drunk is not a funny person in any single way. Yeah, he embarrasses himself. He, he embarrasses himself, yes. There are times when he leaves his webcam on and starts jerking off. That's funny. That's a fun, that's a fun thing to goof on him for. But Jeff the Drunk is not interesting in any way. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that Howard makes weirdos interesting and most people can't do that mm -hmm. a lot of people try to have weirdos on their show i mean i'm able to do it with andy right. but a lot of people can't pull you saw that one coming. Yeah. you're looking at me like oh here it comes, yes. <laughs> here it fucking comes. I know. Up. if you didn't say it i would <laughs> I know what's next. all right so this is john when he's i believe not drunk now don't hold me to this but i, I have a feeling because john gets real slurry when he's drunk he doesn't sound like this anymore you know what? I swear to God, I I I I thought it was a, I thought it was like I I did the, I do the same thing. Spit it out. <laughs> the elephant boy goes spit it out. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, retard. <laughs> what even elephant boy dunking on me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I want to get this image off of our screen, Andy. So what else do you want to, <laughs> sure, yeah. you want to check out on here? Okay, uh, in clip 11, this is, uh, they're kind of remembering how John was 
patiently waiting to be brought into the show proper and just never actually was. And John gets he, get, he gets a look on his face like a, he gets a thousand yard stare like a Vietnam vet. OK, <laughs> let's watch. At this point that uh, and I don't mean to be, to be rude. This is just my observ- observation. But um, you were always wanting to like get to the next. Not that you weren't at the next level, but like there was Gary, Robin, Fred, Jackie. Rob, and then you were like kind of kept at bay for some reason like like you didn't get to go to like howard's house or not until later but when i was there and yeah, I, not in the you, beginning. no no i, I had to earn my stripes so but in the process you earn your stripes and you're out there getting beat up by people and doing things that you have to have a set of balls for for no money you should have been bumped up to another elevation and you weren't and, and you had that mentality but and then there was me and you, and I was always on, always going to be down on the intern level, while you were in the middle of waiting to get brought yeah. to the inner yeah. circle. I was so, ready to get made. Yeah, but I think for a while after that, you- Gorilla, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I, I like at, this, at this point. This that, outfit uh, though, it's like a Christian see- Darth Vader. Yeah, <laughs> if Darth Vader converted, became a born again. Yeah, that's what his helmet would look like. He's wearing a cross as a necklace. I wish John got made like Tommy and Goodfellas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the way, Grillo, you're losing all credibility with me right now. This amount of ass kissing, yeah, why for this call screener is insane to me right now. Um, you guys want to get into salary talk? <laughs> How could we not? One thing that John loves to talk about is how much money he made, how much money that guy make, how much money. Let's talk. Let's talk salaries. You were yeah, yeah, no, no. I'll like, tell you, I, not, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, when I left Stern, I was making eighty five thousand a year. On average, I probably made about four hundred thousand a year with the Tonight Show. Right. Okay. The reason why I played this clip is because someone brought this to my attention. I apologize. I, I forget who it is, but John talks about how he made five hundred thousand dollars a year when he got hired by Leno. As the announcer. Yeah. He was then demoted as a staff writer. And I believe he was then paid 300000 A great salary. But when you're making 500000 yeah, that's a pretty big cut. That's almost half. Yeah. yeah, that's almost half that was cut. So now John goes, hey, I averaged like 400000 <laughs> You know, it's like, well, weren't you hired for half a million? Yeah. Mm, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was 500000 Then it was three. So yeah. the average of that is four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is why... And now I'm picking up on this. I understand a little bit better. When he was at Cedar Rapids, Iowa, at that... Um, double Z's. Double Z's. Very oh, good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember they had the Q&A. Right, right. And, and the, guys, the guy's like, tell him, how much money did you make in The Tonight Show? And he's like, I don't know. I can't remember. 300000 Yeah, right. Now yeah. it all makes sense. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So it was both. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he forgot. <laughs> yep. That makes sense. Three, four, sense five. <laughs> Hey, John, I hope you didn't buy a, a really big mansion or something for your family. Oh, you did? Oh, shit. Well, yeah. bad news. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kanoga Park's up and coming. Yeah. <laughs> I want to start living the valley now, John. <laughs> yeah. If you're the, to, if you're the announcer for the Tonight Show, step forward. Not so fast, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to be home, at, home Depot adjacent, John. You have a home improvements. <laughs> I'm just doing my Mike Tyson impression. Yeah. Now. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, all right, here is a joke that goes over everybody's head. Cabby calls into the show. And of course, they're talking about the boxing match and John's talking about how he kicked his ass and all this stuff. And so John obviously trained. We, we've covered this when we cover Easy for You to Say, Southern John's autobiography. He talks about how much training he did and what great shape he was in. <laughs> And uh, Cabby talks about what he did to train for the fight. And what's great about this is that Grillo doesn't get the joke and then tags Cabby's joke with the same joke. John, John was training with MMA fighters. I was training with uh, uh, Miller. Yeah. <laughs> Who, Dennis? <laughs> <laughs> Miller High Life? <laughs> yeah, Miller Beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cabby. Nice to talk to you, brother. I was training with Miller. <laughs> like, like, what? Like Miller Highlights? Yeah, yeah. That was the joke, idiots. Yes. I didn't care about this stupid stunt. That's the funny thing about this, too, is Cammy's just like, yeah, I didn't really give that much of a shit about a stunt for a radio show. I didn't think I was going to become the next professional boxer. Like, John thinks he was going to be Rocky after this. All right, let's give a shot with the, with the champ. 
Let's see what happens. Throw him in the ring. Oh, the way he tells it, he was. <laughs> he yeah, was right. the champ. I know. And I always wanted to be a professional boxer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my dream came true. All right. So this is John talking about how he doesn't trash these guys in his book, which I don't even know how he could maintain an understanding of who he trashed and who he didn't. Because that's all he does is trash. <laughs> always be ever... bashing. <laughs> yeah. So ABB, always be bashing is the motto of this book. And uh, I always love when John does the, I'll be honest. Uh-huh. You know? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. No. But that was a big uh, fucking thing. That was. I don't, I don't, I don't really, I don't trash uh, you, you guys in the book. Well, I wouldn't have a reason. Well, I, I would, but no, but I wouldn't expect you not to just say wonderful, like, great things. Like, you, said, you know, I don't, no, I don't, I mean, look, uh, I'll be honest. Uh, well, I'm always honest, but uh, I remember Tom used to say, if you say that you're be honest, it means that you lie on the other time. Oh, shut the fuck up. Bro. It also means you're lying now. Yeah. When you say, I'll be honest with you. Like, well, we expect that, but if you're saying that, I like that he remembers Tom Giussano going, John, when you say, I'll be honest with you, it means you're Every usually other full time. of shit, yeah. which yeah. is true, especially when it comes to John. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't trash talk you guys in the book. By the way, you don't need to read the book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no one here needs to read this book. You're I didn't put you in there because you're nobodies and nobody cares about you. <laughs> I don't even remember that. Wow. All right. I have uh, a few more things on here. So as they're talking about this shitty apartment that John was subletting to them at a profit, <laughs> guys who are making minimum wage and working part-time at minimum wage in Manhattan. So John, for some reason, starts bringing up people's names that, A, nobody knows, and B, you're not supposed to call out people by their full names on shows. It's kind of frowned upon. No, no. I'm t- I, I turned Benji on to my old account and Joseph <laughs> Del Pret and uh, I think Mike Navarro, maybe. I don't know. Hey, do you know I banged, um, do you remember Janine Guys? Oh, dude, you're going deep into the nobody else knows. But yes, I know exactly who you're talking about. She yeah. was dating. Was Navarro's, was Navarro's girlfriend. Yeah, now, now, I know you don't fucking, eight months after they broke up, I took the other, her friend, I took to, um, you know, to my place to bang. Her friend... Went and slept in the other room in that apartment. Yeah. And Janine slept that to me, and I ended up, I ended up, I ended up having sex. <laughs> what a story, Mark. What the fuck kind of weird what purple brag is that? Yeah, yeah, like, he has to say Janine Guys. He has to yeah. say her full fucking name. <laughs> Do you remember Janine Guys, the woman that's going to commit suicide 30 <laughs> minutes after hearing this? <laughs> you see, I always try and help people, because what else are we here for? So thankfully, they call him out a little bit. What do you wrong with that? I can't imagine the audience, like, even know. I mean, that's so far uh, Again, no. <laughs> Even Ganji's going, John, no one knows what you're talking about. I know that we, we hung out together 20 years ago, and we have mutual acquaintances, but why are you bringing those people up now? It doesn't make any sense. So then, oh, that's the other thing, too. He talks about Crystal Bernard, yeah. the star of Wings. Oh, yeah. And brings up how he could have fucked her. Mm-hmm. Because the question's asked, like, oh, any celebrities you bang? He's like, well, I could have banged Crystal Bernard. And no. he says that she's promiscuous. And it's like, well, no. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. You're calling her a slut? This woman who obviously you thought you could have banged. He's like, I would have, but my wife was, you know, next door. <laughs> what a class act. <laughs> so then he goes on to talk about how when he was on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, all of the girls wanted to fuck him. No, but but believe me, all the girls like downtown Julie yeah. Brown, you know, Melissa Rivers offered to show me her breasts. I mean, I mean, they all like like fell in love with me. <laughs> you guys believe that mm. all the girls fell in love with stuttering John Melendez? <laughs> no. You're not buying that one. <laughs> <laughs> Seems a little bit implausible. So then he decides to go ahead and call Grillo out for something that I assume was shared in private. Some hot gas for everybody. Well, and Grillo has a crooked penis. You know that. <laughs> I don't have a crooked penis. You told me you have a crooked it sh- penis. It strained itself out. No. <laughs> no, he's got like a Crohn's disease. Penis. No, I mean, penis is fine. Crohn's you told me disease. that your penis is like crooked. I, 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 no, I didn't it's know like the leading tower about. of Grillo. No. Fred, my friend, <laughs> will you fine. check out? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this guy? He's on his show going, yeah, you know what he told me in private? Yeah. He can't get it up. (laughs) Holy shit, what a loser you are, girl. Remember you were talking about that hot chick you couldn't get it up for? Remember that story? Girls go, no, I I don't know what you're talking about. You're thinking of something else. And also Jackie had a stroke. (laughs) Yeah, right. I don't even remember that. Wow. (laughs) 
<laughs> let's not forget. <laughs> also, let's let's talk about uh, jerking off while driving. That's always fun. Jerking off is more fun, man. You're jerking off while driving. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> fucking awesome, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Andy, what else you got over here, buddy? Uh, it, in my clip 14, he alludes to maybe somebody in this room and uh, wanting to do them bodily harm. Oh, shit. I hope it's not producer Chris. I like that guy. <laughs> you know, John may not be the biggest guy in the room, but if you're going to start a, a, a fight with him, you, you better be prepared because he's not going to be scared and he will rip your nose off your face. No, I know. And there's certain people in New York that I might be doing that too soon. Yeah. <laughs> wow! I'm gonna club him with his own feet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> way to call your shot for violence, John. Always good to put a bunch of evidence out there. <laughs> he might be responsible. <laughs> what a fucking idiot! <laughs> You more? Sure. All right. Yeah. Clip sixteen. This is uh, John's idea of a joke, which is not a joke at all. Shut what Donald Trump is doing. That, I don't know where you're reading this. I, I'm not reading it. I'm hearing it from their quotes. No, that's what Donald Trump does. No, he, wait, wait, wait. The, the on, I got I, I to get my charger. <laughs> nice pants. Don't keep recording. Dude, I'm just joke, bro. <laughs> no, I, I just realized I'm no battery. I saw that sixty three percent. No, I got you. So what I'm saying is, there is my downstairs. This is, you know, it's so funny, Steve. I have a downstairs laptop. I have a downstairs desktop, which I'm watching the Yankees as I'm talking to you. And then I have an upstairs laptop where my studio is. Yeah. But, it's so funny. Yeah, what's funny about that? <laughs> I'm watching baseball while you're trying to do an interview with me. It's almost like an insult yeah. and not a joke. Who would watch sports while podcasting? <laughs> right, what a cock. <laughs> <laughs> so rude. I'll, I'll see myself out. Yeah. No, that was just, that was John trying to brag. Right? Yeah. Trying to brag to his buddy. Now, his buddy can see his shitty apartment that he lives in, yeah. so it's tough to be like, yeah, but you know what? Three computers over here. Yeah, right. mm-hmm. three, it's so funny. Three I have three computers. computers. Oh boy, Fucking dildo! He moved his studio downstairs since then. He was talking about how his studio was upstairs, but he does have that extra oh, bedroom it's downstairs I'm super, now. Well, yeah, and, and it's well, I actually know the whole floor plan. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> That's neither here nor there, people. <laughs> I have cameras e- in the outlet. Either uh, way, spy cams. <laughs> uh, anything else from this episode, Andy? Uh, Worth noting. In clip nineteen. He does a little uh, Anthony Cumia bashing. Oh, great! Uh, I never signed anything. Um, well, that's the, yeah, I didn't either. And I don't know why people like, you got like Anthony Cumia, you know, oh, it's so stupid, you know, which by the way, Anthony Cumia is saying it's stupid. And, you know, in serious sex, I'm fired him. He just loves to disagree with me and try and disparage me. But the truth is I never signed a damn thing. So this is about his lawsuit with right. the, the uh, publicity rights. Right. And, you know, it, it probably is stupid because if you had signed something that said that you get publicity rights, you probably would have won the lawsuit. Correct. Yeah. If you had any connection with the company that you're suing whatsoever, right. there might have been something to look at. Yeah. But the only reason why that went to appeals, in my opinion, is that every judge was scratching their head like, wait, what? <laughs> what are you suing them for? And every time, the great <laughs> buck, 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 yeah. would just go... Well, we don't know yet. Yeah. That's why we need Sirius to give us the evidence that proves our case. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, scratch. They're like, you want Sirius to do what now? Yeah. Or they can just settle with us. Well, how much do you want? We don't know. Yeah. You tell us. We it just was want, the worst case. We just want money over here. Yeah. What don't you understand? <laughs> Step one, seal underpants. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know. Clip 20. This is uh, uh, them talking about what a great lawyer Popak is. Oh, good. I'm, I'm confident in my lawyer. He, he's a smart man. Yeah. And he he has litigated in court a number of times, and let's say, as his own quote, he's had more success than Tom Brady in the courtroom. And I don't, and I don't doubt him for a second. And I know, oh, yeah. Well, that's a stupid thing to say, and it doesn't make any fucking you sense because Tom Brady's not a lawyer. No so sense. saying that you have more success in a courtroom than Tom Brady it doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm sure Tom Brady would say that he's had more success on the football field than Michael Popak. I know for a fact he's won more Super Bowls than Michael Popak because I'm a sports guy. <laughs> yeah. and I know Show this off. sort of thing. <laughs> 
He just knew that John was going to be impressed by that. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's better than the greatest football player of all time. Oh, okay, that's a hyperbole. Sure, <laughs> why not? <laughs> that's a great tagline. I'll go along with that. I felt so bad for Grillo because near the end of the episode, Grillo's just trying to do an ad read. He's got these attorneys. I don't know what the deal is, but John will not let him do it. John's being such a prick, and he should know better because he has those amazing sponsors, betonline.ag or whatever that <laughs> sponsor is. So you would think that he would know, like, sponsors want you to get your ad read out so that people can hear it and they take it seriously. All right, guys, we're going to have to wrap this up. Uh, my I, my producer's got to... Um... He's got to run, so I don't want to keep him here too long. But, Why uh, are you reading? What the fuck are you because doing? Because I'm post? trying to get fucking sponsors, bro. I got this law firm, okay? Uh, the, the DCL firm. Wait, are you gonna do a? Wait, wait, I'm wait, doing wait a live Gage, commercial. He's gonna do a live a commercial. Live, wait, yeah, I am. Yeah. This is a, have Fred do it. It's yeah. even better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he'll get through it. I don't okay. know if you'll get through it. Uh, <laughs> I know. Give it a Gange. The DCL firm does. It's uh, it's it's provides. <laughs> Because uh, surprise, surprise. To, because thanks. It's, it's a series of what an by the asshole! I have ever seen in action. Hold on, they have a Oh my series. god! I'm trying to work this out here. Wait, wait. This is a law they're, they're, firm. They're, they're, yeah, <laughs> they provide uh, legal advisory services to businesses. They've resolved over 100 million dollars in business. To, 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 Damn it! <laughs> business oh my disputes. god! And, and they're, they're, people are actually banging down the door to get in, uh, in touch with them. They, they also advisory and consulting services. Like, Can front, they consult you front, on not to read a fucking ad again? Front, yeah, give me this. Uh, all right, okay. Give me this. Right, fuck listen, thing. he was all an right. announcer. Give it to yeah, John. Okay, yeah. The idea that he has to big time everyone all the time. Oh, when right. He, when he sees people as as littler than him or whatever it is, he thinks he's better than them. He has to just be an asshole. Oh yeah. Just let the guy do his ad read. Right. He's intimidating and, him. He's making sure that he feels shitty about it. Yeah. Good job, John. My clip seven is a little more of that. So apparently he's uh, always the same guy. Yeah. yeah. It's just got to know. No, you don't really get involved with politics. But it's on every uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at noon uh, Pacific uh, daylight time. So three o'clock your time, Steve. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> that, 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 no, it just, I had to do the math for a second. I know you did. That's why I helped out. <laughs> I saw your brain start to smoke up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, so everything's going you know well. I love you, Steve. Oof. Hey, hey, this is a guy that fucked up the time zone, like booking his guest for months and months. And now he's finally figured it out after three years, and he's going to try and make this guy look like a fucking herb because right. he doesn't know it off the top of his head. Correct. Oh, oh, you don't know this? Yeah. What it are you, an me, idiot? It took yeah. me forever to figure <laughs> it out, John but now I know, and hand. you don't. <laughs> See, now, if I were Grilla, I would have gone, what if I was in Hawaii on vacation? Then what time would the right, show be yeah. on? Like, oh, shit. Well, then you see <laughs> some head scratching going on. <laughs> I wasn't on. ready for that. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know, Wednesdays and Sundays? I don't know. Shit. I was. It's funny. We were talking about this with uh, Drew Lane. I had forgotten all of the shows that John tried to do that didn't work out. <laughs> Obviously, the "What's Bugging Me About Hollywood." Oh, yeah, that was the that greatest was so one. Fucking funny <laughs> because he had that guy from the Tonight <laughs> yeah. Show make the opening scene, opening credits. Yep, and it's like bugs running all <laughs> over John's face yeah. and into his mouth. <laughs> and he played that like once. And he's like, "All right, I'm never playing that again." <laughs> 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 and then he also had that stern. Reminiscent show that was on Sundays, and I think he only did two episodes of that. I think Ganji was a guest, and probably um, Scott the Engineer, and then that went away. Do you guys remember that when he was doing no. shows Saturdays and Sundays? Yeah, it only lasted like two weekends, I think. Hmm. Must have been cutting into some uh, <laughs> yeah, I think his was drinking, drinking time. time yeah. <laughs> well, also, I, I bet he was a little dehydrated on those Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, oh shit, this is gonna suck. Speaking of dehydration. This clip right here, Ganji went out to visit John in L.A. when John was living in his mansion with his wife, and this will tell you everything you need to know. The, the first time I went out to Los Angeles after, after John moved to L.A. and I went to his house, um, and we were sitting in his backyard, and John proceeded to drink, I don't know, probably 20 beers, and every two or three beers, he'd run out of the ones that he had in front of them, and he would just yell for Susanna. <laughs> to, to bring him more beers. And poor Susanna, his wife, was literally just shuffling beers back and forth for the whole time. That was her job. <laughs> She's not a wife as much as a barback. 
By the way, he doesn't dispute this in any single way. Yeah, yeah. he never jumps in and says, oh, no, Ga- no, no. Gagey goes on to go, oh, no wonder she got a divorce from you. Like, that's that's insane. And when he said probably like 20 beers, I bet that was accurate as well. <laughs> yeah. He sat in his backyard with them as he's just yelling, more beer! <laughs> and then she has to grab the empties and bring out... Fucking John. I mean, we just saw it in the clip that you played. Yeah. He never comes in with one beer at a time. Yeah. It's always two or three beers mm-hmm. at a time. Yeah, he must go through a minimum of four beers in this 40-minute interview. Does he know about hard liquor? Like, I want to sit him down and just go, John, you're doing this so inefficiently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there's, there's so much more efficient ways to drink yourself stupid than how you're doing it. <laughs> Let producer Chris <laughs> yeah. teach you the ways. It, it, it's pronounced te- uh, te- te- tequila. Yep. Yes, yes, it is. Tequila. <laughs> Try some. <laughs> You'll love it. Um, that's all I got for us. What do you got, Andy? What did we miss from your uh, clips over here? Well, that's about it. I know we're mostly making fun of Stuttering John here, but uh, in my last clip, clip 21, this is uh, they start bringing up Radio Gunk, and this, <laughs> this clip is just a lot of... Uh, Monique's speculation that couldn't have been further off. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But, but Monique, I did speak to her today, and she said that Shuli was uh, involved in an extramarital affair. Somebody, oh, really? in the, uh, somebody in the office called Shuli's wife and told her. They reconciled down there, moving down south. Uh, Alabama. How, how, yeah, Howard is leaving at the end of the year. Apparently, um, everybody there is promised a job somewhere. And that Sal and Richard are going to have their own show somewhere on Sirius. <laughs> and that's the last I heard of anything. Wait a second. So Howard's Howard is is leaving? Um, that According to Reddit or some type of... You see that twinkle in John's eye? <laughs> yeah. This is back when John thought he was going to get that gig. Yeah. Oh, seriously? He's a new morning man? <laughs> Who's more qualified than this hey, guy? Right. <laughs> I got the resume to prove it. Yeah, I got an upstairs and downstairs laptop. Computer. John, it, it turns out we are going to replace Howard Stern, and we need a call screener. So, yes, we are offering yeah. you employment at this time. Howard is, is leaving? Um, that according to Reddit or some type of according to Reddit, yeah, <laughs> well, then it must be true. Oh, yeah. Ironclad <laughs> radio gunk information, he's leaving, but he's also got a deal for like an eight episode David Letterman style interview thing that, like, he did with E that went nowhere. <laughs> 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 Wrong again, Grillo. Not even close. <laughs> Yikes, that's almost embarrassing. My sources at every subreddit about Howard Stern tell me. Yeah, I know. I know that he's like, he's like, oh yeah, Monique's got the inside info on this. <laughs> she read it on Reddit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's probably not true then, I would imagine. Who are these podcasts? W-A-T-P.